I'm having a very hard time starting this video, but here it is. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I procrastinated it all day for this one, I'm not gonna lie to you. His name's Ray, I'm Felicia. Felicia, we own a small grocery store. Uh, if you're new here, uh, our channel's all about small business, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. And if you're into that, please smash the like button. It really helps this channel and support this small business. Weird to ask for likes before the video starts? Um, possibly, but I feel like our, you know, the people that actually watch our videos might they, like it because they like our stuff all the time, so I don't think it's that weird. That's cocky. No, I'm not saying yeah. it to be cocky. I'm just saying, like, we... The ride or die people usually press, yeah, press like. Yeah, we appreciate it. Okay, we appreciate yeah. you. Whoever presses like, we love you. And wishing you the best fortunes for your day. Put up all the blinds. We need some more lighting. We have a ring light coming in to make our videos even more professional for you guys. Um, this natural lighting is not that great on a gloomy day, but yeah, there's a lot of shadows. So our video today is pretty much to tell you guys how much we've done in sales since quarantine started. Um, I feel, ooh, whoa. Our, he's got the, he's got the hands going. It's, our business has been one of the lucky ones. We're very appreciative um, during this quarantine that we haven't been hit the wrong way like many people have. Um, we kind of went the other way and we're going to get into that during this video. Thanks, I didn't mean to interrupt you. The hands are just me thinking. So some weeks are definitely busier than others, but I can say that each week has been better than what we normally do. So. We noticed that some weeks are like crazy busy where people are just constantly stockpiling whereas the following week will just be busy but not like as dramatic I guess if that makes sense. Does that people make sense? are yeah, people are using our store now because they want to avoid contact with all the bigger stores and come into our store where we limit the amount of people. It's a small space so you come in contact with maybe 2 to 3 people at a time when you do all your shopping. Whereas if you go to Walmart, you may come in contact with, you know, 40, 50, 60 people, depending how busy it is. So during this time, we chose not to close down our storefront. Um, we had kind of mixed feelings about it because, of course, we didn't want ourselves to get sick, but we chose to keep it open. But we also offered curbside pickup, which I think just kind of took off on its own. Um, we get so many orders for that. It's, it's insane. So we have three streams of income now. The main one being walk-in traffic. Second, very close is curbside pickups. People call in, text in, or email in, and we get their order ready. They come pick it up. And a third one is delivery, which is slowly picking up, but is always going to be the third um, source of income for our store. So basically speaking, our sales have exploded, um, almost doubled or tripled in the last three months. Um, to be honest, March was finished strong, April was beyond anything we ever really imagined, and May is very, very good, but it's slowly uh, tapering off a bit. We do hope that this uh, trend of sales continues for the rest of the year, if not the rest of our, our days at the store in general. Um, we don't hope you know the situation with the world continues, but we hope the loyalty and exposure that we got these th three months really helps our business stay on the incline. We're gonna basically head to the store today, show you exactly which departments made the most money, exact month to month breakdown of our sales. We're gonna head out and do that now at the store. It's just a lot easier because we have all the numbers and statistic over, statistics. Statistics. Statistics <laughs> over there. And uh, it's just uh, a little bit more uh, meaningful, we'll say, if we're there while we tell you all the numbers. Okay, bye. So I feel like I should start something, like a segment, about what happens during my week because I, there's always some thing that happens on a Monday that I always feel like I need to share. If you followed our video last week, you know something happened at another local grocery store. But this time I was actually at Dollarama picking up a few things and um, there it was a fresh go next to it and I saw two guys trying to steal a cart and as they were leaving the parking lot, the wheels locked, so they were trying to maneuver it out of the parking lot. Just kind of funny to see, and I guess that goes to show not to, not to steal grocery store carts, because they are expensive and you shouldn't be doing that anyways. But it was just funny. To me anyways. Maybe not to him. No, but. no, that's true though. <laughs> so what, they went to walk it out and it no, just... No, they were stealing it. Like, the one guy, I don't think they realized 
That's like they realized that they went all the way across the parking lot. So I think they they thought, oh, we're, we can get away with it. Let's go. Let's go across the street. And then as soon as it left, like the actual parking lot, like the entrance of it, it just comp the front wheels completely locked. And then they were trying to move it, thinking that they ran over something and they didn't. The point and of the story is you. You think these carts mean nothing, but they literally cost two to three hundred dollars each. And that's just what ours cost, so the bigger ones might cost more than that. Yeah, so when you think or you just see someone walking down with a cart, it costs the store like two to three hundred dollars each. But nobody cares unless you're in the business. So the situation that fell upon us has given us the chance to buy more inventory and those of you who have followed this store for the last maybe year, year and a half that we've been vlogging it have probably seen it grow with more shelves, more products that we've shown, more inventory and just general improvements. And when you start making improvements to your store, you know, it not only brings in more products that people can buy that, that were already coming to your store, but it brings in more people who generally wouldn't have come into your store before. You really want to have something for everyone to get more people into your store. Generally, the more inventory you have, the more people you can attract because you have more to offer, you have more options, therefore catering to a bigger audience. So this fresh produce cooler was our first big addition that we uh, improved. We used to keep everything out on tables, take it down every night, but that was causing us to kind of have too much waste, lose too much money and we needed an improvement. So this was our first improvement. And this cooler on this side over here became our keto vegan section. That was a huge market for us that we took advantage of and we were able to by reinvesting into our business. Over maybe a year, we slowly made that improvement as well. All these shelves down this aisle were never here before. We added them. This is all salad dressing, soups, uh, broth, things like that that we wanted to start carrying and eventually to reinvest into our business. We had to buy the shelves and the product, but in the future, it just keeps building more customers, more inventory, and a bigger average sale. Same with this side here. This all became another aisle of our store. Over time, we built each shelf kind of week by week, reinvested into our business in order to keep the customers coming in, keep the people happy, give them new items, and a variety of things that they can add to their baskets to eventually you know, have each customer spend a little bit more money. So as we were talking about our monthly sales, March, April, and May have been really good to us. The market uh, has really, really gone up and our sales have doubled, sometimes tripled. Um, we're turning this corner here into a three-door freezer section. Um, we've been humming and hawing for this for a while, but we're, you know, we're losing money every time someone comes in and asks for you know, uh, frozen pizza, frozen veggies, you know, frozen meats, frozen fish. Every time someone comes in and we don't have that product, we're not only losing that sale, we're losing the potential for them to come back and to tell other people that we have those items. So essentially, if you're missing things, you may lose your customer, you may, and you for, for certain lose your sale. So this is our very small stand-up freezer here. Now we just kind of have frozen veggies in. But the problem is it's not enough it's not enough inventory to accommodate what we really want to carry. So this will be replaced eventually just by a shelf. We don't need this little one. We're gonna go for a large three-door freezer like you saw up front. Uh, those are coolers, but very similar. It's gonna be a freezer. How's the inventory coming? So over the last two and a half years, this market's really grown in inventory and average customer spend. What we're still struggling on is getting enough people in the door. Now, I'm not saying that it's um, something that we can't uh, fix, but we need to get more traffic in the door in order for people to pick up all the new products that we keep bringing in. And if you remember from our earlier videos, this store was a lot more flat, had about maybe half the inventory it does now, and slowly we're gonna keep filling it with things that people really want to buy in order to increase our revenue to expand this business possible into a second location or into a bigger space that's right nearby that we've been talking about for about a year now. We're really trying to make this business work 
as best as possible in this space for as long as can be and then expand from there. Now let's get into the numbers for all those people that have been humming and hawing about the data. I put all three up. I put three pictures? Three pictures. One of the store hours. Okay. I perfect. put open Tuesday, Friday, blah, blah, blah. One for curbside, blah, blah, blah. And then one for delivery. Okay. So every Sunday we kind of do like a little social media push to remind our customers, you know, we're going to be we exist. Hey, we exist. You know, people are very fickle. They can forget about you week to week. You always want to be in front of them. That's why I suggest if you're in oh. business, take pictures of everything that looks good. Even if you, you know, you don't really, oh, what am I going to post today? Take pictures of anything and post it. I'm not saying overdo it or, you know, blast people with pictures. You want to be in front of people's faces because they're on their phone 24 7. Social media is a beautiful thing for small business. Also, Ray shaved his head. Oh, That's yeah. why he looks different. Yeah, I look like a little boy now. <laughs> Our monthly sales for March, when things were really starting to pick up for us with all the exposure we were getting, is uh, $48,174. Um, we're open six days a week. Um, and that was an average sale of $22. So if you divide 47,000 divided by 22, you'll get a, the, the amount of customers we had that month. So April was our biggest month ever, record-breaking sales. I don't know how we did these numbers in the small store, but it was absolute insanity. I'm talking as soon as we opened the doors to when we closed them, people constant in and out calling for curbside deliveries, just walk-in traffic galore. It was crazy. $78,940. Um, average sale was $29.36. So you can just tell, you know, that a little bit more panic buying, a little bit more people avoiding um, the big stores and, you know, trying out the smaller grocers who, you know, don't have as many people in the store so they don't have to come in contact with anything. So we did very well that month and one day we're really hoping, you know, that becomes a regular norm for us month to month even if uh, during regular times. So as of May 18th, this is uh, a Monday today, we are closed, but uh, we are at $37,444. I'm predicting another really great month, around 50, 55,000 I would say. Things are tapering off a little bit because our average sale is 2611. Um, but yeah, that's still a very, very good month. And it, it, if it keeps up like this, we're gonna be we're gonna have a very, very good business. And mind you, you know, with these increased sales come increased risk to our health. We're taking all the precautions possible, but the risks still remain the risks. So with, you know, money comes this risk, so they balance out, you get paid more because of your risk. I'm not sure how that works for business like this, but you know, we, we couldn't close this business. It made no sense to, with so many perishables that would rot and we'd lose so much money i i don't think it was advisable to close down our business but we took the proper precautions and it paid off everyone's well everyone's doing good on our end so i thank you guys for watching this video i hope we provided some insight on small business during these times especially small grocers or meat markets or delis um we were kind of the forgotten souls in the history of uh you know the big box stores but somehow this pandemic um, brought us more business and I'm sure many of them are thankful and that's just, you know there's a silver lining with every uh, terrible thing that happens and we're all hoping that it goes back to normal but the exposure and the loyalty stays with our businesses so thank you for watching thanks uh, for always uh, you know liking and commenting we read everything we respond to as many as possible and I wish you the best stay safe my friends ciao